Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. So here it is. It's 12 steps, and it looks like when this was moved into uh, WebEx, it looks like one of my slides got goofed up. Maybe I had it goofed up when I sent it over. But uh, either way, even though the numbers don't go to 12, it's still 12 steps. It's a 12-step program, if you will. Observe the foreign exchange market. Take a look at what's going on. Take a look at some trends. This is sort of the seedling of forming some opinions. Discover opportunities, and we'll talk about how you might be able to do that. <coughs> analyze technicals, analyze the news and fundamentals, analyze volatility, and then state your forecast. Half of the battle is just leading up to knowing what you think after, after uh, going through all the information available to you. And then finally, Step seven, more than halfway through, is to select a strategy. Now, again, all these are kind of simple one and two and maybe three word phrases here. But when you do it in the context of the underlying you're trading and in the context of who you are, this becomes an invaluable tool. I have every single one of my mentoring students print this out and thumbtack it to the wall right there where they trade. <clears throat> Every time they make a trade, they go through the little checklist and they make sure they've done all these things. Now, selecting the strategy can be arguably the most important point in this whole process. Once you know what you think and you've got a forecast in mind, picking the right strategy can make the difference between the trade being a winner or a loser. I know plenty of people who are great at picking the, the direction of a, of a currency, and they're good at it, and they know the market back and forth, and then they go to start trading options, and you know what happens? They lose money. Why do they lose money? Not because they guessed wrong, but because they picked the wrong strategy, and they didn't account for certain things. They didn't account for the time components of options. They didn't count for volatility. Then, of course, we plan our exits. We execute the trade, monitor, adjust, and subsequently exit the trade. Now, I want to kind of go through these and, and kind of flesh them out a little bit in, in some more detail. And I, I want to do this in such a way that it's conducive for most traders. Again, you're all going to do things just a little bit differently. But I'm going to show you how we can do this in such a way where where uh, it's going to be helpful to most of you. <coughs> now, as you'll recall, the first step in this trading path was observe. Observe the market. Observe, specifically in this case, the Forex market. I know plenty of people, whether they trade equity options or Forex options or whatever options, agricultural, it doesn't matter. They wake up in the morning and they say, well, I, had, I heard a presentation yesterday on iron condors. I'm going to go out and I'm going to trade some iron condor option strategies. They don't know what's going on in the market. They didn't look at their news sources. They didn't look at any charts. They decided what strategy they're going to do. A, and it sounds like kind of a ridiculous thing to do when, when you hear somebody just kind of point this out in, in the fashion that I'm doing. It seems kind of ridiculous. Oh, today I'm going to trade time spreads. Today I'm going to buy some calls. Well, hold on a second. I, you know, first things first. The strategies that I trade are contingent upon what the market is doing. I refer to me and my students as contingency traders. 
what you trade and how you trade is contingent on what's going on in the market. So step one is observe the market. Look at the just look at the big picture. Let's let's kind of survey the land. Let's look at the forest before we look at the trees. What are the macro considerations uh, going on? Is Greece a concern? Um, are interest rates a concern? Maybe not so much now with the U.S. Maybe though. Maybe we can look at, uh, you know, if this was, were stocks, we'd look at sectors and, um, you know, stocks in the news, but currencies are in the news quite a bit. You know, we'd be kind of taking a look and just seeing, okay, first step, hmm, you know, what's going on here? <coughs> and then after that, then it's about discovering opportunities. <coughs> now, again, we're searching for the opportunity, not the trade. Everything we're doing at first is leading up to having a clearly defined forecast so that we can select a strategy that makes sense for, for the situation. What is the situation? What's an opportunity? Is there anybody out there who was uh, you know, looking at any particular currency today and, and do you have an opinion on it? Go ahead and type that in under chat. Let, let, let's take a look and see if there's anybody who has any interesting opinions while we're going through this presentation. If, uh, if I see anything that catches my eye, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll call it out. So, you know, we're not saying, okay, well, I want to do an iron condor, so I'm going to find a stock to do an iron condor on or a credit spread. I'm going to find a stock to do a credit spread on. No. <coughs> You go through and you sift through a bunch of stocks, and I'll, I'll explain a couple techniques for doing that in a second. And you sift through a bunch of stocks or currencies or whatever, whichever market it is that you're in, and you look for opportunities. Hey, look at this. This is in an uptrend. Hey, you know, I read something in the news about this particular currency. Oh, yeah, I know what's going on there. You know, there's this going on, this going on huh, this might be a bullish play. Now we have the seedling of an idea. We have a potential opportunity. All opportunities start out as, as potentially good trades. Your job as a trader then is to basically talk yourself out of a trade. Oh, yeah, you know, the euro's looking, you know, the euro's looking to maybe make a, a, a bounce back. You know, some of you may think that. Some of you may be looking for it to, to route a little further lower. But let's just work on, under that premise. Oh, the euro is kind of poised to make a bounce back. So what does that mean? You go out and you buy calls on it? Well, no. Now that we discovered a potential opportunity and we have the start of an idea, now we go through the rest of the process, specifically the three analyses processes, and our goal is to talk us out of it. Basically, there's a gazillion trades you can make. But we only want to make the good ones. We only want to make the best ones. We want to make as few trades as possible. And for some people who are very active traders, making as few trades as possible and only making the good ones, you know, that might be 100 trades a day, you know, if you're a professional trader. Some people, it might be just a couple trades a day. But just because something appears good at first doesn't mean it's necessarily good. We've got to do our homework. And, you know, really, you've got to find the right balance. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.